Okay. Hi guys. So I am very, very excited about all the compensation plan modernizations. If you haven't hopped into your back office, you're going to be doing that soon because we'll be asking you to do that. But um, you'll see that you can now see preferred customers in your downline, in your virtual office, points and rank up, um, reports and all of that. And we are going to help you do some goal forecasting for this month. And Jason, this is my husband, Jason. He is our resident Excel whiz. So he's very helpful <laughs> with reporting. Um, he has created a Google sheet that you can plug in your values in and will output your projected points. You can work with it with the new compensation plan values to goal forecast. And um, it'll really help you see how your team is doing as the month progresses. So you have kind of this living document that can um, be changed and adjusted as the month goes along. So I am going to share my screen and we will kind of walk you through how we have found will be helpful for you to um, project where you're going to be and goal forecast accordingly and use the Google sheet that he's, he's created um, in, in alongside the new virtual office um, export of your genealogy. So I'm going to share my screen here. Hopefully you can all see that. Okay, Jace, do you want to go over what is in the Google sheet? I know it looks like a bunch of numbers right now, but we're going to go over it tonight. Sure. Yep, so this is a Google Sheet. The purpose of this is to uh, provide a, a platform for you to plug in uh, numbers for both your points that you expect from subscriptions that are currently set, as well as uh, handle some projections for uh, new enrollments, anticipated new enrollments for the month. Um, so we'll go over this uh, in detail, um, but first we'll start with the uh, back office export. So the first thing you need to do, need to do is uh, go into your back office, go to points and rank up and click the export data button to export a snapshot of your genealogy. Um, and I have that report here opened up in Excel. Um, so it's gonna be a .csv file that you can open up in Excel or Google Sheets um, or any other spreadsheet application that you use. Uh, and I'm gonna go over uh, the approach to uh, truncate this list down to something more manageable that you guys can print off. And you can uh, use that printout to kind of cross people off as you determine what bucket they fall into with the new comp plan. Um, I'll also show you uh, a way to use Excel to essentially uh, filter and get that same information if, if you'd like to filter uh, doing that. Mm -hmm. um, so before we do that, uh, we do have to create a copy of this sheet. So once we send you guys the link later tonight, your first step is to create and save a copy of this Google Sheet. So to do that, you would just go to File, Make a Copy. And you can name it whatever you want uh, and click OK. And that will allow you to edit the file. The file that we initially share with you will be in uh, view only mode. Um, and so you won't be able to make any edits until you do make a copy of that. Um, so I'll go ahead and go back to the original file I was working on. Um, so let's jump over to the uh, back office export. So the first thing you'll notice is I've cleared out uh, some information, some names and addresses just for privacy reasons. You, you guys will obviously have sponsor names and, and customer names here as well, um, but I just cleared those out for, for privacy purposes. Um, so first thing you want to do is highlight the first row, or excuse me, first we want to resize the column heading. So if we click this top left corner button, it will highlight the entire sheet in Excel. Um, so just this triangle in between the column A and the row one, everything gets highlighted. And then if you move your mouse right in between two column headers, you'll see the mouse change uh, to this little double-sided arrow. And if you double click when you're in that position, it's gonna auto resize all the widths of those columns to make sure you can read all the text there. So once we've done that, then we're going to start uh, filtering and, and hiding some columns just to make the data a little bit easier to read and print on one page. Um, so for you guys, you probably want to leave the first and last name. So let's go ahead and hide column uh, D through L because I don't think we'll need that. So I just clicked and drug my mouse uh, over the column headings, the letters to highlight what I want to hide. And then I right click on any of those column headings 
the letters and uh, select hide to hide those columns in Excel. So now you can see it goes from column C to column M because I have all those columns in between hidden. Um, the next thing we should probably hide uh, columns P through T. We don't really need those. And let's go ahead and hide column V for team points. And the order list, the order ID list isn't needed either. Okay, great. So now we have a smaller, uh, more manageable list here with just the information that uh, we're interested in. Let me zoom in a bit. All right, so if we highlight the first row in the data table, you can just click on row number one here on the left. That highlights the entire row. And then we go up to data and we click on the little funnel button, the filter. And that adds these little drop downs next to all of the columns uh, in row one. All right, once we have that, we're gonna want to filter out uh, all of the people who have no subscription set currently. So you can see that uh, in this list, these people all have subscriptions, um, but further down, they will not, and they will show up as blanks. So if you click that little filter button next to the next auto order column heading, you'll get this and you can scroll all the way to the bottom and you can see there's an option for blanks and we're gonna uncheck that. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna hide all the rows where the next auto order value is blank. So now we are only looking at the people in our back office that have a subscription currently set. So once we've done that, we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and uh, start sorting this data table. So we wanna sort the next auto order in ascending order. So we click the funnel button next to the next auto order column heading and we click ascending. And that pulls uh, all of the earlier dates up. You'll notice there's a, a January 27th subscription set here. That's, That's like for the following for year. <laughs> Uh, so somebody really wanted to bump their subscription out there. Welcome to my back office. You yeah. will have a treat of these people and later on in your, in your Lexus journey, I'm sure. Yeah, somebody's also excited to start their products next March. <laughs> uh, and then we have all of the subs that are set to run this month that are starting there. You can see on the 6th, or sorry, uh, June 2nd moving forward. Um, so now that that's sorted, we want to also sort by level. So go over to column N click on the little drop down next to the level heading. And we again want to sort ascending. Great. So now we have all of our level ones in ascending order by their auto order, their subscription run dates. And below that, we will have all of our level twos and threes and fours um, and so forth. All right. So now that we have that, uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to filter by customer type. So this is a new column and you can see we have two options here. We have ambassadors and we have preferred customers. Um, so we will start with uh, the ambassadors. So I'm gonna click that drop down next to customer type and uncheck the box for preferred customer. And you can see now we only have a list of ambassadors. And so the purpose for this is we wanna have two separate printouts, one for just ambassadors and one for just preferred customers. Um, and so this is the first of those two printouts. Because those people are handled similarly, but slightly differently in the new comp plan um, point breakdown. Because as you know, there's a category that preferred customers are gonna give you points where ambassadors will not between the 25 to 49 PV um, category. So we're gonna be taking a look at ambassadors and preferred customers separately. Sure. All right, so next we wanna print this list. So we can go to file, print and you will see uh, all of your printout options. Um, you can scale the data to fit. So if you don't want this across 17 pages, uh, you can reduce it down to say 10 pages. It's gonna shrink those, those column values. It's gonna be harder to read, um, but you can kind of find a happy medium in terms of the number of pages you'd like to print out or stretch this data across. Um, another thing to note before you print, uh, make sure you have grid lines turned on. So that is under the page layout section at the top of Excel. 
And then over on the right under grid lines, that little box next to print should be checked. And that will uh, make it easier to read uh, when you print this out. It'll print those grid lines between each cell. All right, so once you've done that and you've printed your list of ambassadors only, again, go back to customer type, click the, the drop down next to customer type, and we're gonna switch uh, the check mark from ambassador over to preferred customers. And so again, we have this list of level ascending from one to seven, as well as within each of those levels, the uh, sequence of subscriptions that will run throughout the month. All right, so again, we do file print, scale it accordingly, and go ahead and print that. So now you have two printouts, one for your ambassadors and one for your preferred customers. And you're gonna use those lists to determine, uh, to, to make a tally or a count of how many uh, subscriptions you have in each of the different buckets for the new compensation plan. And so if we jump over to the Google sheet, you can see a reference for that in the bottom right here. So this is just a table that, uh, that represents uh, the new compensation plan. So we have levels one through seven on the left, and we have three columns depending on if they're PC or PC ambassador, as well as the PV range to uh, assign them to each one of those uh, buckets. If you have downloaded the PDF that has the modernization of the, I don't know if you can see this, that has that little chart there in the bottom right corner, this is that exact same chart. So if you have that, you can reference that, or you can go by this Google sheet also. Um, but yes, you can take your printouts and maybe start with one of the categories. If it's preferred customers with 25 to 49 PV, it's going to be easy to tick down that list because you're only looking at that printout of preferred customers, right? That has all the information, all the data is condensed in just a few columns. So you can go through and just like one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. That X amount of people, right? There's 12 people in that category. Great. And then you can input that data into this table, which you can talk more about inputting the data there. But. Yep, so in terms of inputting data, you're only going to be entering data into cells that have a green colored background. Um, so everything else uh, are reference values or formulas to count, to sum up the total amount of points that, that you earn in each of those buckets. Um, so to continue Ali's example, if you're looking at your preferred customer's printout, they're already sorted by level from one to seven ascending. So you can just go down that list, starting with your level ones, you're gonna be counting up how many level one uh, customers uh, are in the 25 to 49 PV range for their set subscription. And you're gonna enter that number into this cell here. So I had five, let's say I actually only had three. So I go ahead and enter that. And then I move on to the next cell. Okay, how many level twos in that 25 to 49 range? Okay, I had three here. And you'll notice when I enter three and, and hit enter, uh, the value in the yellow table over here updates with the amount of points that I'm attaining in that category. So it's essentially taking however many points we get for that category, a level two PC in the 25 to 49 PV range is one point, and it's multiplying it by the count or the tally of people that have that, those subscriptions set currently. And so it's summing up the total number of points I'll earn here, and in the bottom right here, you can see 588 total points in this scenario uh, from the subscriptions that I've entered in this green table here. All right, and so you'll go through all of your PCs and then all of your ambassadors and you'll, for the ones that have a PC plus ambassador in the 50 to 99, you're gonna obviously add together the tally of PCs and the tally you found on the ambassador sheets for that level and for that PV range and enter the total amount uh, of subscriptions here. And then uh, that, that's essentially it for the, for the manual uh, printout. Approach. Yes. So if you feel like you're kind of new to Excel and you wanna do everything manually um, and do what we just showed you, awesome. Especially if you have a back office that maybe is only a couple pieces of paper long, <laughs> then I would totally just do it manually because it might be a little bit faster for you. Um, but if you'd like, uh, we're gonna show you how to even further um, separate out their PV and subscription information so you can find a count within Excel 
and have Excel do the work for you, finding your total numbers of people that fit each category um, instead of having to do it manually if you have a pretty large back office or just want to try to do that. So um, sure. there's the printout manual tally version, and then we're going to show you how to do it in Excel, um, separating out the PV and having Excel count for you. Yep. So this next part is completely optional. If you are comfortable with Excel and filtering and want to give it a go uh, and have a large back office, this is a great way to do it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy the entire data table here. Um, and actually, before I do that, let's go ahead and take the filter off of customer type because I want to get customers and ambassadors. Um, and the way I did that is I, I clicked in, in one cell. So I chose the top right corner of the data table. And then I just did uh, on Mac, it's command shift and then the left arrow to highlight all of the rows to the left or all the columns to the left. And then again, holding command and shift, uh, it's control shift on a PC. Uh, and then the down arrow, it highlights everything down as far as the data table will go. And then you can let go of command shift. So now you can see that I've highlighted the entire table, all the data. You can also just right, you can also just left click in the top corner and drag your mouse all the way down to this bottom right corner. Uh, either way works. And then we're gonna copy, so control C, and you'll see the, the lines here, the dotted lines blinking to show that you're copying data. Um, and then we're gonna create a new sheet and right click. We're gonna go under paste special because we don't wanna paste all the data in between the filter grows. We just wanna paste the values that were visible in the previous filter table. So we're gonna do paste special and then select this values option. And when we do that, you can see we have a new data table here, a new copy of that filter data table we were just looking at on the previous sheet. Um, and the other reason I do that is just to retain that original filtered list um, before we start editing things uh, in case we make a mistake. You can always go back to the kind of this checkpoint of where you had printed off those initial lists. So back to this table, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the next auto order column and copy that, sorry, copy, and I'm gonna paste it right next to it just to create a copy of it. Next, I'm gonna highlight column I, and I'm gonna go up to data, text to columns. It's up here at the top. And then it's now gonna ask me, okay, you wanna split the text in this column into multiple columns. How do you want me to, uh, what logic do you want me to use to split out that data? So you can use delimited or fixed width. We want to do delimited and we click next. And then because of the way the data is delimited with commas and spaces, we can check delimit by comma and it will split it into three columns. And we also want to split by space because we want the PV dollar amount separate from the letters PV. Uh, so we check space and then we click next and then finish. And so you can see that one column of data, column I, was just split out into multiple individual columns. And really the goal was to just get the numbers, the dollar amount of PV into one single column so that we can then filter it by ranges. So we're gonna go ahead and delete these other columns we don't need. And I'm just gonna add a header here called PV. Great, so now our table is ready. We can highlight row one. We can add a filter, and now we can pick one of those uh, categories from our input spreadsheet. So let's say PCs and ambassadors in the 50 to 99 PV range, right? We wanna enter the tally by level. So if we jump back to this, we go to our customer type, we make sure we have ambassadors and preferred customers checked since they're treated the same in this particular range. And then we can go to the filter, and we can say filter by, and we want to filter by between, whoops, wrong one, filter between, hmm, it's not letting me, uh, oh well, hmm. weird, okay, so let's do, uh, let's do greater than 100. Just do greater than 100, yeah, for an example. So for this example, we do greater than 100. So 
Something's not working with Excel here. Wonder why it's clicking. There, there you go. go. Huh. Maybe it was just a little slow. Okay, so now I filtered by only PV greater than 100, and it's already sorted by level. So I can go to the bottom of my level one section and yeah. find that bottom amount. We can highlight all the way up to the top, not including the heading. And so you can see that I have 54. On the bottom right, it shows the sum of how many rows you're highlighting. Yep, it gives you a count and a sum, but for this case, you're it's all level ones. But yeah, you want to look at the count because oh yeah, you don't yeah. Want to sorry, sum up level sorry. Two. count. No, so sum. if we look at the count, we have fifty four in this category. So I would go back to my sheet here, and I would enter fifty four into uh, that particular bucket, and then we go on to level twos, and I just go to the level twos, highlight however many I have in the greater than hundred PV range, and enter that value in here. So that's a quicker way to do it if you're comfortable with Excel and, and want to give that a shot. Otherwise, just printing it out and going through uh, line by line and, and checking them off, uh, taking those tallies and entering them into those green colored cells uh, is a great way to do it as well. Okay, so right. once you have all this inputted, whichever route you decide to take, um, it's going to give you that total point output, which is your total projected points for the month, just going off of the subscriptions that are existing in your virtual office. We all know that there are both manual orders and people who have subscription issues. There's going to be people who bump it, people who reduce it, people who have credit card declines, um, people who turn it off, all the things, right? and all kinds of changes. So I like to subtract at least 10% for attrition. If you have a larger team, I would err on the side of more like 15% um, because there's always gonna be the people changing their subscription, right? So thank goodness we are getting points for people who bump it below 100 PV now. So that's fantastic. Um, but that attrition rate will kind of accommodate um, or will kind of allow for people who change it like I mentioned earlier. So um, I would take whatever the total points minus at least 10% to 15% for attrition. And that result is going to be more of your accurately totaled projection for subscription orders. Now, a way to take a look at who might've been ordering manually on your team, um, it is definitely a manual, manual way to check it, but you can go down to the people, or go back to your back office, go, go back in your points and rank up um, report, uh, page, click on May, like use the drop down to go back to May. And in your virtual office, you can click the subscription tab twice to bring all the subscriptions to the top to sort that way. Scroll, scroll, scroll down to the bottom of that and find the people who have no subscription on and were commission qualified last month. Now, last month, of course, um, we had 100 PV being commission qualified. So you can also take a look at the people who had any PV at all, because this month you're gonna get paid points for the people that um, were ambassadors and had 50 PV and up. Um, but because you don't have PCs from last month in your back office. But um, a way to look at who was ordering manually would be to look at who has some PV, particularly over 50 PV and did not have a subscription on. And you can do the same we like to do it for like the last three months. That kind of gives you a good example of who might be ordering off and on, even if somebody ordered once or twice within the last three months, maybe not all three months. Um, and Jason has a tab at the bottom here, we open up that tab, where you can input that. We just put a placeholder value in there, but you'll get that tab where you can input either what points those are or who those people are, if you would like to keep track of them throughout the month to kind of ensure that they're ordering or if it gets to the end of the month and you're pushing for a rank advancement because you're getting all these new points now, these people are gonna be your target market to place an order with, bump up an order to the next PV category, that kind of thing, because you know they're having some sort of activity ordering products. So they might be ready to order this month or they might be interested in adding on a product. So that's gonna be the people that um, you can add in and we would take the, the last three months ish and look at maybe what an average is of those points coming in from those manual orders so you can take a look at them and put them in the buckets just like we did for your subscription people so if they're ordering a bag of slim they got 70 pv you know they're going to be above that 50 pv mark if they're ordering you know two capsule products they're probably over 50 pv so they're in that bucket um of course if they're ordering over 100 pv that's a new bucket so look at all those people maybe tally up your total of manual order points 
for the last three months and take an average of those. And you could, you could maybe add some attrition, subtraction attrition on that also, and then come up with maybe an average of your manual order points coming in over the last few months to kind of have a manual ordering projection. Okay. Yep. And yeah. So maybe. you're going to have swings from month to month. That's why you look at the last three months. It could be 110 last month and 70 the month before. Um, so that's why we take an average. So let's just say the average in this uh, made up scenario is 90. So we have now two components. We have the expected amount of points coming from subscriptions with the new comp plan based off the breakdown and the tally of subscriptions we entered in each of these categories. We subtracted from that 590, 10% attrition, because we think 10% of those set subscriptions are gonna get canceled, declined, or reduced. Um, and that leaves us with an estimate for subscriptions. So 531 points. Uh, we expect another 90 points to come in from these manual orders, people who don't have subscriptions set currently, but historically go in and put a manual order in. And then the last piece of, of your projection is how many new enrollments you think you will have in the current month. And that's what this last tab, uh, this third tab here uh, is for. Yeah, so you can add, go back to that first tab really quickly. So you could note a line below that, um, your actual final like total points projection after you subtract attrition, you could add in the average manual orders line item there if you wanna just have all those numbers on one page um, and give yourself kind of a projected total under there. Um, so that's an option to just give you, you know, a value of like, this might be what you're looking at, but I would, um, I would not count on any of those manual orders because the people who don't have subscriptions on are kind of random <laughs> in their orders. Um, you know, you get the one-off person who really just does not want a subscription on and orders every single month like clockwork, um, but that's not the majority. We find that they're, they're more random orders um, that might be your once every two months, once every three months, once every six to eight weeks that, you know, they fall, the, they kind of their orders fall where they may, right? Um, so that's kind of just yeah. an approximation. Yeah, I mean, you can do it however you want. You can take the average of the last three months. You can take the lowest amount, the lowest monthly value from the last three or six months, whatever you think is uh, conservative. But I think sure. it is wise to be conservative. But you will have some points coming in for manual orders. Absolutely. Whether it be 50% of your average or 80% or the low. So however you want to handle that. Um, and then we take that total number. So uh, subscription plus manual orders. Uh, so 621. And we can plug that in to this last sheet as your projected end of month points. So I've got 621. Let's say I'm aiming for senior Ruby this month, which is a goal of 750. Uh, and then your point difference you're trying to make up now with new enrollments is 129 points. And so now we're using this table highlighted in green here to try to strategize where those enrollments are going to come from. So let's say personally, I'm gonna enroll uh, six this month with 100 PV or more. So I can add a six. And that brought my total up to 231. Um, let's say I strategize with some leaders and they have a level two that's going to be signing and going, you know, signing to three people to get the incentive and go silver. So those three people were going to be level three. So now I'm going to put in a 13 instead of 10 enrollments in that bucket. And so it'll, it'll reference this table down here in the right, do the multiplication for you. And then it sums up your total expected points from, uh, from that, uh, projection from that scenario of new enrollments. And so you can kind of play around with this table initially, and then as the month progresses, maybe halfway through the month, do a check-in, see how you're doing. You can adjust these numbers. You know, maybe you haven't had any level threes. So you can change that 13 to a zero. Okay, am I still going to hit my goal of 129 points in enrollments? And you look down at your total point projection, and yeah, I'm still at 181. And you can keep playing with those numbers as the month progresses and you and you understand where those enrollments are actually coming from in your organization. Exactly, and I want to stress to everybody to not be changing any of your, of your enrollment behavior. We should always be trying to enroll people with welcome packs, the 209 welcome packs, because not only will that be giving you the most amount of points with an ambassador ordering a welcome pack, it's also going to increase the pay point, having them order the higher price welcome packs with more products. It's also going to give them the highest chance of success because even if they need to dial back on one or two products, they're still gonna land above that 100 PD mark. But if they start with only three products to begin with or two products in the event of like slim and collagen or something, right? Um, if they drop one of the products and they're falling down 
down below the next um, PV threshold, which is reducing your amount of points. So we always want to aim high, start high and dial back as needed. But now the blessing of the, of the comp plan modernizations is that we have the confidence now to recommend maybe a one product or two for people to start as preferred customers because we're still getting points for them. So I don't want us to be afraid of dialing back from the 209 to the 109 to maybe just a bag of slim or maybe just a bottle of Metaburn or something, right? If they end up as a PC ordering a single product or one or two products because you're still going to get points for them they're still going to um, contribute towards your rank advancement which is wonderful um, and as that happens to you throughout the month you can plug in those pcs and have them show up in this point forecasting model but always i would be forecasting starting high like i'm going to enroll six my top three leaders are going to enroll six, like go for that and, and plug things in wherever people land throughout the month. Um, and then kind of go from there because I don't want us going out and trying to find customers all of a sudden because we get points for them now. I want you to realize that you're getting six points for a level one ambassador getting a welcome pack. If you have a PC, just order a bottle of Metaburn or something, you're only getting two points for that person. So Although that's wonderful and the likelihood of them ordering from you again in the future is very high because you're going to give them great customer service and they're going to have a great product experience and that's wonderful. Um, it's going to take three preferred customers ordering that single one off product to equal one person ordering a welcome pack from you. So just think about where you want to direct your attention and what you want to be promoting, what you want to be talking about, how you want to be guiding people in sales conversations. Um, we really definitely want to stick with guiding people into a 209 welcome pack and really trying to get them into that. And if they're just not really in a place to purchase that, they're not ready to commit to that, that's fine. Dial back from there. And if you want to just get them started before the end of the month on one or two products, then you can, you know, rest joyfully in that you're getting points for that, but don't aim for that. Um, so I just kind of want to stress that because then you're going to be having to talk to three times as many people if you're trying to go for customers for points rather than ambassadors with welcome packs. Um, it's really going to uh, have you scrambling to try and have more sales conversations. So um, quality over quantity. <laughs> That's yeah. what I'm getting there. Yeah. And welcome packs are still the best deal. I mean, right. in terms of their value. Absolutely. It's a one-time deal. So mm -hmm. you should take advantage of it. And as you um, maybe get inactive ambassadors back and you see them pop up in your virtual office or you are personally helping those people you can also plug those people in um i'm not sure if you've seen but plexus has the new 50 pv pair up packs there's three of them in the combo section of the the virtual office or the shopping site now um it's active collagen active x factor and active immune plus i believe or no, active member, active member. Um, if that's wrong, forgive me, go look at the combos. But I'm really excited about those because those are perfect opportunities for us to approach our inactive ambassadors or people who maybe order like once every four months and you would like them to order this month. You wanna help them find a product like active or any number of those other products they're paired with. Um, and get to that 50 PV threshold. So Plexus is very smart in adding those combos into our back office because they also offer some savings over the products individually by themselves. So um, those are things to pay attention to, especially if you're looking towards rank up this month um, or just want people to get started with something that may be different from what they got in their welcome pack at first because Active is one of those products that's becoming a gateway product for people that's guiding them into the rest of the Plexus products. It's wonderful to have another option um, you know, like our pink drink, Life Slim, that has this cult following, people who absolutely love it, um, find that it's getting them and their husbands off of energy drinks and all of this, right? And it's anti-inflammatory and all the things. It's a really, really, really great product that is going to be so much easier to get people to move to like a 50 PV benchmark than it is going to trying to get them back on a full blown combo, right? So I would be guiding people towards those if they're like not loving where they're at or they're just, you'd love to invite them back, that kind of thing. Um, so those are great combos to look at. I hear a child coming, sorry, <laughs> that was distracting. Um, so yeah, does anybody have any questions? I'm going to stop sharing my screen really quickly. Um, let me open the chat box. You can feel free to type anything in the chat if you have any questions um, about the Excel stuff or the Google Sheet. We are going to be um, 
giving you that Google sheet in the chat tonight. We'll also be posting this recording so people can watch how to do all the things that Jason was showing in Excel. So you can kind of watch and rewatch how he walked through all of that. Um, and also kind of my challenge for everybody is for you to do this in the next couple of days is what I would recommend. I would highly encourage you to dig into your back office. It's not going to bite you. <laughs> you can't mess up your back office. Click around, download some stuff. If you screw up your export, trash it and download export a new one. Okay. Like you can't really screw it up. So um, get in there, download your stuff. I always say, if you don't know your numbers, you do not know your business. So if it sounds like this is daunting to you, you're not familiar with exporting your genealogy, you're not familiar with clicking around your back office, now is the time to start doing that stuff because it's really important as your business grows to understand how to look at the data and what that means for your points and what that means for your organization. Especially with the new comp plan enhancements, um, you'll start to know what gives you the different amounts of points and where you need to be directing your attention. Um, it's going to be be really helpful. So I would encourage you to do that in the next couple of days before the month gets away from us and before you know a week is gone and you don't have any point projections or goals for your organization, right? So get with your leaders, have them do the same, um, see who they're working on going silver, see what their goals are for the month, um, and kind of plug in and see where you're at from there. So if anybody had any, doesn't have any questions. You talk about moving forward just using the last sheet as opposed to doing the whole. Oh yes. So moving forward, now that you have your um, your uh, points from subscriptions already in there on the very first Google Sheet, the very first sheet of the Google Sheet, um, you have that. And moving forward in in months in the future, you can really just use the month end points. The, your month end points month. subtract 10, 15 percent for attrition, right? And then you can plug your new enrollments into that furthest over sheet, the new enrollment projection sheet, you can kind of keep working with that, um, which has all of the formulas to translate all your projections, your enrollment projections into the point output. So um, yeah, that's how you can kind of do it moving forward. The only reason why we're going through every subscription and also looking at manual orders is because it's the first month of the new comp plan. We don't really have a baseline for how many points we're gonna get from all these new buckets. Um, but after the end of this month, you're gonna know what you ended with in terms of subscriptions and manual orders. And you can just take that, subtract 10%, and then just do the new enrollment projection moving forward. Exactly. Everybody's going to have more points this month, which is great. Because all uh, your level ones, even if you have no preferred customers, all your level ones are now one point more. So nice. everybody should be working on some rank advancement. So, all right, guys, I'll be in the chat awesome. if anybody has any more questions. Thank you. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.